Hey guys, this is Steven with Evan M Carnivorium. We're in uh, sunny Northern California. It's December, not quite December, end of November, 2022. Um, we're gonna go over a very uh, commonly asked question to us on social media. You know, we've published a bunch of stuff about um, water germination of Venus flytrap seeds. And we do a lot of uh, hand pollinated crosses every year and one of the methods we recommend for germination of Venus flytrap seeds is actually water germination. And we've done quite a few experiments on this. Uh, and I can excitedly report some of the data to you and explain why we do this and how we do it. Um, there will be a separate YouTube video on specific water germination techniques. But um, in a nutshell, we're uh, comparing standard water germination with peat or sphagnum moss germination. And uh, what we like about water germination is that it's very uniform. Uh, you can see all the plants are sort of at the same stage and we can um, transfer these into peat and put them in a formation into a way that we can kind of keep them separated by a certain amount of spacing. Whereas when you use uh, standard peat germination, it's hard to control where the seeds fall. A lot of times they get clumped together and that can be a bit of an issue later on. Um, so, there are some downsides to water germination, and this is an example of that. This is one of our own crosses. This is G.J. Basmati crossed with Jaw Smiley. And you can see there's sort of a white cloudy halo down there. Uh, at the bottom, there's a few seeds. This is uh, fungus that formed, and this is what you want to avoid in water germination. From our, uh, from our experience, this happens maybe one in every 10 or one in every 11 vials. And again, we'll talk about ways to avoid that in a, in a different YouTube video. Um, but let's go ahead and show you how we transfer uh, and how we decide when we're going to transfer our water grown, uh, our water germinated flytrap seeds to peat based media. Okay, so uh, for the tools that we're going to use today, uh, there will be links to this in the description. We've got um, tweezers. These are very small sort of small instrument things that we can get from Amazon for working um, usually with computers. And then uh, they're relatively inexpensive. And then we have craft glasses. You can see there's magnification. There's actually a light up front too if you need it. Uh, we're outside today so I don't think we're going to need the light but the magnification really helps when we're working with this. Other thing we're going to use is uh, we've got two pots already pre-mixed with our standard a uh, soil mix that we use here at Evan M Carnivorium, um, along with some sphagnum on the bottom. We'll have a video about how do we mix our soil a bit later. Um, and then we're just using wet paper towels. This is a tube that's already been uh, set for a while. These, these, these seeds have been in there for longer than they should be. Um, again, typically water germination happens in eight to 12 days with our seeds. Um, and then you need to wait several more days after that though, because you want to see, I don't know if you guys can see this, we'll try to highlight this in the video, but uh, there's at least two leaves. Actually on these, some of you already see the traps coming out. And then uh, there's dark roots underneath. Once you see two leaves and the roots, this is the time that we tend to say it's okay to go ahead and start doing the peat, peat transfer. All right, so, here we're gonna go ahead. This is one of our own mixes. This is one of our own crosses. This is Evan M Carnivorium Purple People Eater uh, crossed with Jaws Smiley. Um, and this is from this year's seed batch. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna dump them out, really just like that, onto the uh, paper towel. And then we're gonna use our craft glasses all right, and it can definitely helps me see down here. And then, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's several small seeds down here. These aren't necessarily actually um, ungerminated seeds. They're actually more likely uh, seed coats that have been shed. These have been sitting in there a bit longer. So we're gonna gently tease these apart uh, using the tweezers. Again, trying to avoid um, ripping either the stems or the um, roots. All right, so what you can see here is we've, we've pushed some of these out onto the uh, wet paper towel and gently sort of 
teasing these off. And you can see, for instance, here, this one has no seed coat. All these seed coats that have been expelled along here, these are not ungerminated seeds, but actually these are seed coats that have been pushed off. So this, this one here, you can see there's a root here, main stem, two leaves. I don't see any traps yet, although some of these other ones have some early traps on them. Uh, for instance, this guy, that's a, that's a real early trap. Um, and we're just going to slightly, you know, tease them apart. And then we're going to grab them by the root like this. And we're going to transfer them into the soil. So we just, while we have the root held, we just kind of push that just below the surface of the soil, just like that. And then again, we're trying to keep these in a nice formation, which is the benefit of doing this underwater germination is that I can keep these sort of evenly spaced out in a small pot as opposed to um, peat germination where you just kind of sprinkle the seeds across. It's really hard to control where Venus flytrap seeds land. And once they're in the peat, uh, they can sort of fall into a big clump. And then it's actually a big pain when these grow into a clump in the soil. Um, it's hard to, it's more difficult to tease them out once they've been in the soil and sort of get them evenly spaced. All right, so now that we've got our plants, or these are our water germinated seedlings in order, we're gonna go ahead and um, just mist. So we've got a spray bottle uh, with rainwater or distilled water. I'm just gonna mist that. And then we're gonna put these under lights uh, for the first year under you know in the in the winter time um these are some other ones that we've done earlier you can see this one right here was just seed sown so we just drop these onto the pot and you can see they kind of clumped up in the middle this is one of the downsides of trying to do these and just just sowing them on peat these were grown under lights for the last two months uh here's another one that is uh, water germinated and then we uh, actually move these into formation. You can see it's a lot a lot um, more spaced out compared to the one before. So again, this is just, you know, we just dropped a bunch of seeds on here. We tried to space them out, but you can see it just kind of clumped together. These were water germinated about the same age, so you're not seeing a whole lot of difference as far as trap size and stuff. Um, but these are going to be easier to deal with later on because we don't, they're not going to, the roots aren't going to grow together. Again, this is one of the benefits of doing the water germination stage here. All right. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Again, we were talking about water germination of Venus flytrap seeds and specifically how we transfer them to peat and when we do that transfer. Um, there's going to be a bunch of other videos coming out from us, including how to mix your own uh, media, uh, peat-based media. We're also going to give a video about how we fertilize our flytrap seedlings, which um, we've done quite a few experiments on that, so look out for those videos. We'll also be doing a video about um, how we do our hand pollination here at M&M Carnivorium. Again, if you like this video, please like it, and then please hit that subscribe button as there will be many more videos coming out in the near future. Thanks again.